Hi everybody, it's John of Jade Rich Millinery and welcome back to my channel and today we have the next episode of Five Ways and in today's video, well I think you can see from my backdrop, roses are red, violets are blue, I have some flowers that you can use in millinery that didn't rhyme. Roses are red, violets are blue, I have some millinery flowers for you. You see, see, there I got it, I got it in the end. If you're new here, hi, yes, I'm John, this is my channel. We talk about hats, headwear, and anything that you can put on your head. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on notifications to be notified when I put videos out in the future, usually on Wednesdays, um, sometimes a little bit later if I'm running late. So preface this video by saying, Anything I'm wearing this top in, this is recorded slightly later, so the, the angles might be a little bit better. I'm still figuring out how to work with multiple cameras. So yes, that is a thing. So if I'm wearing this, it means it's the second day of filming and things might be a little bit better. If I'm wearing a black shirt, yeah, let's, yeah. I had so many, so many um, problems with filming, recording, just everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong and because I'd gone and made two and a half, maybe th uh, about two and a half of the, of the five, um, I couldn't take them all, undo them all and start again. So, as always, there are timestamps in the description box below and along the sort of like the bottom of the screen, like type thing. Um, so you can jump to whatever you want to to look at you might not want to watch them also um just look out for that and it should be on the screen now so if you want to see any of these just jump to the timestamp in the description box below so without further ado let's crack on and make some flowers so i have so with this first one we're going to be making these small beautiful flowers just like this and to do this i have this tool which is um more of a stiff tool really it's not like the soft bridal tool so you want that kind of slightly rougher tool and this is around i think this is about two meters long and about two inches wide now i have had to take the flower to apart because it didn't work the first time um so that's why it's all creased but uh, it's so simple and i have done this before so on this channel so i will link that in the description box and i'll put a card up here as well or here wherever it is um it's a three-part live stream so you will see that and all you want to do is you want to tightly wrap it around your finger two like two fingers let me just move that out of the way like so. For about half of it. So you've got like a nice compact center. And then I've got these um, like stamens. So I'm gonna pop that in the center. And then just using a needle and thread I'm just gonna just sew them to the center so just catching the fab the fabric so I'm gonna do it that's that way and I'm also going to do it this as well so then it retains that sort of circular center and then so you've got that so then all you all you need to do now is just carry on wrapping the fabric around pulling it kind of tight but not too tight um, because what you want to do is you want to build up those outer layers and it doesn't matter if your fabric is, um, if you use the raw edges neither, because that'll just add that extra dimension of like, not necessarily realism, but just, you know, flowers are not perfect. So neither should be 
the flowers that you make unless you want it to look perfect and then as you keep going round what I like to do is I like to just twist the fabric especially towards the outside it's just instead of laying it like like this you want to lay you want to turn it and lay it every now and then and that'll just add a little bit of volume a little bit of texture and a little bit, bit of dimension and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and then I'm just going to catch some of them but I'm just going to I'm not going to pull too tight because you don't want to distort the fabric too much and this just helps hold it all together and then just adjust your stamens in the center and they have a beautiful tool rose and then all you need to do then is just I've made some already here is just add it to whatever you're working on and they have a beautiful little fascinator with handmade swirly roses so this was the easiest one so let's move on to the next one okay so for this one we're going to be making this f oversized cinema flower which is on a base and uh, the reason why i'm showing you this in advance is because when i was making this i lost the footage for the first bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk you through what i did to start with um before then i jumped to the bit that I actually filmed decently so to start with it's war i used one uh, meter of cinema and i cut some bias strips and so i cut four bias strips in different sizes so i had um two 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 lengths at say well, about two inches and then two which were around three to four inches and then I hand sewed them together to make one long strip um, and then just trimmed so as as it jumped from say two to three three to four type thing um, I just cut it so that it was nice and smooth so the strip was just one long by a strip I then turned over the edge I didn't hand roll due to time constraints um, this would maybe look even nicer with a hand rolled edge um, and I just turned it over twice just to give that more of a, a crisp edge on the side and then I start it in the center you know when you're cutting by strips you've always got that triangle so I just basically got two of the two of the triangles and just crunched it together to make a like a center and um, just started and then taking the small end of the longer bias strip I tacked it to the bottom and I just wrapped it around around six times just to get that tight inner center there um, and then I believe that's as far as I got up to in the deleted footage so now I'll show you how to finish off to make this Okay, so now what I've done is I've wrapped it around um, the center a few times, uh, one, two, about six times. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to loosely just fold it, uh, wind it around. Um, just bear, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm just winding it round. I did do this previously and it all came off apart, so I'm just redoing this. Um, then what I'm going to do is just let it uncurl ever so slightly because this will give us like a nice big flower just like this so um, what I'm going to do now is go in with some thread and like some turn it upside down there is 
try and sew all this together but only in certain sections so for example I'm going to pull it in here I'm just going to put a stitch just to hold that there and then I'm going to pull it in here but I'm going to leave like excess so it's, it's going to look more slightly it's not going to look rounded it'll make if you watch what I'm doing it will make sense put a few stitches there and then some stitches here we are going to go re-over this as well with more stitches so these are just holding stitches pretty good cool and then um what i'm going to do next is i'm going to hide this raw edge so i'm just going to fold it together and just tuck it and sew it down So we've got the basic premise of the flower now. Um, <clears throat> what I what I tried to do, because I, I tried to re-go over what I actually did for that piece. And um, I can't quite 100% remember. So this is like, this may not look the same. So now you want these extra bits that stick out here, you want to go around and you want to bring those in now towards the center. We are going to come back to the bottom in a second, um, but what I'm going to do now is look at the outside and just see right what can we do with the outside. Now I think what I'm planning on doing is nothing because I kind of like it like this. Now if you want you can um, tuck down some of the outer petals, so we'll call them petals, um, rounds. So we'll just tuck them out a little bit. Once you're happy with everything, now you may notice you have not caught some of the petals here. So you are going to need to go back in and deal with the bottoms. Right, so that, that is all now secured at the bottom. So now we're going to attach it to the base. So what you'll need to do is make sure all your nasties are well hidden um, towards the center as much as possible. In fact, I'm just gonna put one more stitch here just to pull that in a little bit more, just to hide that nasty raw edge and there's one more there that's on show cool look at that so there's a lot of stitch work there um, and then it's just a matter of positioning the piece where you think looks best and obviously hides all the nastiness so I'm going to put mine here and I think that's going to work. Yep. So now what you're going to have to do is just hide your stitches as you are sewing it down. So I think you'll be able to see this. Obviously use the, the correct thread. I'm using white because it's the closest I have. Um, to the color and you can also see that on camera as well and they have one oversized monochromatic flower and I really like this it's not what uh, it's not the same but it's in the same vein as the one I made um, and then to attach it because it's so light you can use a hat elastic Co um, or a headband. I wouldn't use a comb, um, but if you do want to put hat elastic in, I would put a comb at the back. So um, that is um, the next 
way to use flour to make your own flour in your headpiece. So now we've done two, we're now moving on to probably one of my favorites. It's not an actual hat, it's a trim for hats. So without further ado, let's move on to number three. Right, so for this next one, to incorporate flowers in your next millinery project, we are going to be making our own applique. Um, I think that's the right term. And to do that, I have this um, nice soft bridal tool, which here, and I also have this pattern, which will be embroidering. So this is a um, <clears throat> inspired by this fabulous, um, youtuber and she's on instagram as well i'll link all her details in the description box below um diana i think it's diana thaker i could be mispronouncing her name like i'm obsessed with watching her embroider things <clears throat> now i've taken some of her what she does and then just put my own spin on it so none of the techniques are actually hers they're just general embroidery techniques but i was very inspired by the 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 flowers that she'd made and <clears throat> and I uh, wanted to to do this so I have already um, if I can find it I have already gone ahead and just made a sample of this already so you can see that there um, it's like this was my first sample and then I was like it needs a bit of a border so this is what I have so I've made my own pattern um, and this pattern is available to download on my website and it is in the description box below but we're not doing it on on actual fabric we're actually we're actually doing it on tools so that we we can cut round it and then applique it to um a hat of some description so first things first you're going to need your pattern it's an a4 pattern uh so print it on some a4 paper and we're going to just trace over it now i tried a multitude of different pens the only one that seems to work is a Sharpie. So, what I'm gonna do is just go over this very carefully. Let me just lift that up to see if, so I can see that. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera. Uh, probably not, but... Um, so next, we, in fact, you, you can see it now. There, so you can actually see that now. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in a embroidery hoop, and I'm just cutting away any of the excess. Now, you probably probably should have used a smaller one. I'm probably I'm, I am wasting a hell of a lot of fabric here, but it's definitely something that I am interested in doing more of. So I will, I will use, I will use it. Then it's the good thing is picking your colors. About what I'm gonna do, this inner circle and the, the ring that I was supposed to, I was gonna do them two different colors, but I think I'm gonna do them exactly the same color. So to do the center, um, ignore the inner circle. Uh, I'm gonna do them all one color, all this center, all one color. So I think I'm going to start with the purple and I'm just gonna pull three lengths. So the center is going to be like French knots. I believe it's called a French knot. And if it's not, it should be on the screen now. And to do it, I'm just gonna come through. So this is single strand. So it's just a general um, embroidery thread, which is single strand. Hold the thread up then you want to twist it around your needle three times one two three pull tight and go back through the knots And then it should be left with a nice little knot. So you want to keep going. In, so I'm going to do that again. So go through. And 
one, two, three. Oh no, please no. Yeah. Like so. So, centers have done and I've gone ahead and I've already done one of the flowers, so I'm just gonna do the second one now. So, um, let me make sure I get that in frame. So, coming from the bottom, you want to just do a long stitch from the center along those straight lines, like so. And then instead of, instead of coming here and going back in, you always want to try and come out from the centre. Like that. The reason being is it will hide any of the... Um, unless, unless you're doing a board around here, I'm not. So you'll, you'll, you may see some of the underneath work because we're working with tool. I think on regular fabric, this would be perfectly fine. You wouldn't need to do that. So I am using a single state uh, single thread so that's six threads in in the one single thread and for the actual flower itself we're going to be using 12 so we'll fold the fabric um, thread in half and we'll stitch so I'm just going to the end of that now so you should see some sort of like star shape forming right so I'll just tie that off you still yet to learn my what how much thread I need for things so I am wasting a hell of a lot of thread but I do know we use pretty much nearly a full hank is the, are these hanks I think they're hanks so what she does is she comes up by the side of one of the petals. Well, not petals, but the thing. And what you want to do is you're going to go over one and then under one. So we're going to go over this. So we're going to go under the next. Pull that through. Don't think you're supposed to use this much thread, but I'm using it anyway. So we've gone under, so we'll go over this one, and then we'll go under this one. Just making sure all my threads to that side. And just make sure it lays just by things that we did earlier so we went under that one so we'll go over this one and then we'll go under this one now it does keep going through the tool so you just have to be careful there we go under over and then under again just making sure we position the thread so under over and then under this one and 
and then just keep going round and round and round until you get pretty much to the end and then um, so I'm going to fast forward through this and I'll show you at the end So at the end of this bit now, so as you can see here, um, the, you can see a little bit of that holding stitch. So what you need to do is just, just pop, just cover that, just go around, but instead of weaving it in and out, you wanna, you wanna sew it through the tool and just um, cover that edge. Like so. Just go around and just cover those spokes. And then to tie it off, what, what I do is I just weave it in and out between the center, not pulling too tight because you don't want to pull the stitches out and you don't want to make it any more taut than it already is. And there are your two flowers. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to um, fill in the leaves and with a chain stitch and then do little French knots along the dots, join them all together with some thread and I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. Okay, so I have actually gone ahead and done one of the, I said I was going to do this off camera, but I'm actually going to show you. So I've done one of the um, surround set of flowers and I filled in the leaves. So I'm just going to show you how I finished this off. So starting um, here, so we're just going to come in and just from underneath that flower there. And you can see the dots. I think you can see the dots here. I'm just gonna come in, come through just by where the dots are. And just not pulling tall at all and then coming back up again at the other side of the dots. And back through. And this will just give us that nice what's its stem between the flowers. So to these little tiny flowers, we're gonna be doing the French knots again. So um, you want to come up, hold this one tight, or well, make it taut. One, two, three, and back through, holding on to that. Still quite taut. So much string. And pulling through slowly, and it will give you a nice little knot. Now, with practice, this is, is okay. I, I've managed to do it. Some of my first ones are a bit dodge, um, but it still looks like a flower. One, two, three, and through. Pull that tight. And then I'm just going to cut it not too close but just cl close enough to 
the um, the knot, and then we can we'll be able to hide that with glue once we've finished. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these, and then we're going to start doing the filling of the leaves. Right, so that is all my uh, flowers done. I've gone ahead and just filled in one of the leaves there and I'm just about to start on the final one so um, what I'm doing is I'm, I think this is it like it's either I think it's a satin stitch if you are a um, embroiderer please forgive me please 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 forgive me so and what I'm doing is I'm just doing like long stitches just to fill in that leaf like so and for this I'm using a, a single thread so that will be like six individual threads I believe I'm learning so much about embroidery And if you look here, I actually did like a really good one. This one here where my finger is. I did a really good uh, set of French knots. It's probably the only one that looks good. Uh, the rest of them kind of look more like tufts. But hey-ho. Right, so all the embroidery is now done. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure all the threads at the back. So to do that, I am... Um, just going to add some glue just to certain areas now bits like this where the flowers are don't really need to deal with anything with the um with the leaves i don't really need to do with i have knotted off some of them and i've cut the threads as close to the knot as possible but it's like these little flowers where you can actually see the thread from behind so what i'm going to do is I'm just going to add just the tiniest amount of glue to each one. And I'm going to um, just pat that in with my finger just, just to smush it down so you can now see what it looks like. Um, and then what, I'm, what I'll do is I will um, let this dry and then I'll cut around it and I'll be able to show you the final shot. Okay, the glue has now dried, so this can come off the hoop. And so let me just take that off. Just pull it to one side. And then, there we go and then just using like a pair of sharp scissors in fact I'm going to use a bigger pair first and I'm just going to cut around just like so and then using a smaller pair of scissors I'm just going to trim not right next to, but as close to the st stitch work as possible. Cool. And then I just noticed this one here, you can see a little bit of the thread. So I'm just going to cut that, just recheck everything. And then this one needs the threads cut in. And we can cut these because we glued it down earlier and there you have one handmade beautiful hand embroidered applique and then I mean obviously I'm not going to put it on this base but look how beautiful it looks on that base um, and obviously because of the Tool, it kind of blends in now if you are if you are going to do something similar to this what I would suggest is using a tool as close to the base color as possible it will just help it blend a little bit more because you know up close yes you can see that tool but from a distance 
you guys can't and you can't even see it on the camera above um or at least i don't think so anyway so um so yeah that is um well there's my there's the one my first sample so uh yeah embroidery and in fact i have a really good idea what i think i might do in a in a video in a couple of weeks time is see if it's see how easy it's not going to be see how easy it's going to be to make a tool what's a flat pattern what is a flat pattern that i could use and stitch by hand i'm thinking a flat cap like a lady's soft tool flat cap mm. let me know in the comments down below what you think would you like to see is that something you would like to see um so yes this was i'm like I, I didn't think i would enjoy this as much as i as i did and i really have so i will probably be using a lot more of this sort of work in my own work so yeah so enough of the embroidery let's move on to the next one which is going to be a similar technique in fact it's the same technique but just done on a bigger scale and not exactly embroidery like this but we're going to be weaving fabric in and out so stay tuned for that okay so uh this next one obviously like i said is going to be it's using the same technique just in a very different way so here i have a button this is but this is blocked on my presser for my saucer block and instead of doing five spokes i've done three so you can see here i've got the three and i've just um edged it with some ribbon so the principle is very much the same but instead of weaving instead of coming up through the bottom uh we're going to be sewing it to the top so i have this length of it's like a crystal organza and what, what i've done is it's about about two inches wide and i've just i, I cut into it and, and pulled it so then um it just frays the edges ever so slightly like you can see here right so i haven't tried this so i don't know if it's actually going to work but we'll see so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up just below the top of one of the spokes i'm just gonna just just secure my thread and then i haven't edged i haven't taken off the um side of the fabric i don't know what that's called uh but i'm using that just to secure the thread to it taking the other side i'm just gonna do what we did before so um so this one we'll say it's gone un, uh it was gone over so under over so we want to go under here now we've got nothing really to hold it into place so this is why i'm like is it going to work i think we probably should have done five we'll see after a couple of passes uh yeah i think i think we're gonna have to um, just re-sew these in so i'm just gonna quickly do that now right so i've now just quickly redone this so it's now got five spokes as opposed to three um so let's see if this is going to be any better so i need something to poke it with not not a pair of scissors but i'll use the, okay, these even though it's a, still a pair of scissors right so here we go under ah see that's good that's better over i 
suppose in a way this is kind of like what's it those cabbage flowers i was going to do one of those but then uh i don't think i've done i don't think i've made one in a very long time so i can't quite remember how to do them so uh yeah i think it's giving me cabbage rose vibes So this, that's pretty much one pass. And I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm pulling that a little bit tighter. Just to, yeah, I think this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to finish this one here on camera. And, uh, of, uh. Thing is as well because I've left the edges frayed um what like the warp or the weft or whatever which one it is is kind of sticking out I don't know if you can see that on this camera um but it's kind of giving like oh, yeah it's it's giving me everything so uh one more so while I'm doing this, I'm just going to ask you all a question. So um, obviously this is now my second in the five ways two. So I have a couple uh, planned. So I've got linings coming up. I've got uh, feathers. But my question is, what do you want to see? What Have you got any ideas for this five ways two series? Um, because I want to make content that you guys want to see. Um, you know, I know I've got my hardcore followers and watchers and, you know, people that will pretty much watch all of my videos, but let me know in the comments down below what you want to see in, um, in a future five ways video. Um, and you know, if I like your idea and sorry I'm just trying to sort that one out if I like your idea and I use it um, maybe uh, we can get you doing a guest spot on one of the entries so uh, so yeah so now I'm coming up to the end of one of the strips so under over Under hmm. right, so what I'm going to do is where's my thread? Oh, it's going to start coming the same one as well. I'm just going to come through. I'm just going to just so that. Just with a stitch to hold that there. Just going to trim off any excess, and then grab a next strip and start that again. So I'm just going to so that where that was. Where that came through, like so. So that was over, under, over. Right. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to I'm going to keep doing this until I get to the end, and then I shall see you. Well, I'm going to fast forward it so then you can actually watch me do it, uh, and I will see you in a little bit.
Okay, so it's all been added. So we just now need to cover, do one last one along the outside. So I have my th fabric. I'm just gonna attach it just like we did before. with a stitch or two and this time instead of going in and out I'm just going to wrap it around and just stitch it as it goes around so I'm pulling it tight as it goes around and what this will do is it will just add um, a little bit more towards the bottom plus it hides any of the um, wefts um, what is it the spokes do I have enough to do a third one no I don't right so so as you can see here and then I'm just going to trim that and I'm going to tuck it under To hide that raw edge. I'm gonna sew that. And there we have one very nice, very different. Kind of what would you call it? What sort of style would you call this? Like a percher? I don't know. Um so we need something for the center. So I have this off cut of tool. So what I'm gonna do is, I know this is a blue thread, but we are gonna be gathering it, so please don't shoot me. And I think I'm just gonna just gather that. And just gather that into the center. Oh, yes. I'm just going to bring that in a bit more. So you can't even see that stitch there. And there we have another flower. This is actually like, this has turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, because obviously I've not tried this one before. So I didn't know if it was going to be any good. Um, so I'm just tying off that. And ta-da! One more flower. This is looking really nice. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I was still a bit unsure about this edge. I probably should have used like a, a purple or a navy, um, but you know, whatever. Uh, so yeah, there is another beautiful headpiece ready to be worn and yeah. So, um, what, I'm, what all of these will probably need lining due to the stitch work underneath. So even though, yes, we did make this out of cinema, um, I know you need cinema for the slightly more open weave, uh, you, this will probably need lining. So I may even use these for my lining tutorial. So that's this one done. And we're moving on to the last one in this five ways flower edition so the last one that we have today is going to be using this sequin film so this is from peter shums and it comes in various different colors translucencies i think they've even got glitter ones as well so it's this is like the oil slick one uh, i have used this a few times for on this channel but i've not used it in this particular way so um, I have already started to go ahead and start to make something with this uh, just to see how it would sit and I'm liking how it's going so uh, we're going to carry on with this. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make yourself a template of a petal 
I have actually used mine as a spiky petal, um, so the rounded bit is at the bottom. And then I went round and I just cut out lots of different um, shapes and then I folded them in half, so which I'm gonna show you right now. So here is one which has not been folded. So it's really, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a crease down the center, just using your fingernails to make that crease nice and sharp. Um, but I'm not doing it all the way to the tip. I'm only doing it enough, I'd say four fifths of the way up to the top. And then the ones um, around the center, around around out the outside, sorry, I actually poke two holes in it. The ones that kind of stand up, I'm only poking one hole in. And I've got this polystyrene thing that I had in a box um, and I kind of use it if I need to poke holes in things. So just open it up using the needle that you are going to work with. Just put a, a hole about half a centimetre towards the bottom, from the bottom, sorry, in the crease, like so. I don't know if you can see that hole there, but there is a hole there. And I, like I said, I've already gone ahead and I've done some of these off camera. And then it is as simple as, so with your needle coming up through the center. Oh, my thread hasn't been tied off properly. What you're gonna need to do is coming up through the center. And then from the back, go through the hole you've just made. And you want to go back through the hole that you came up on, or as close to as possible. And then just position it before you pull it tight. Perfect. So I'm just gonna pop a couple more in here. Through the back. And then pull it tight. They do have a tendency to just t go wherever the hell they want. <laughs> it's a bit of fluff there. So sometimes you have to just either just accept that or you undo it and uh, relay it somewhere else. And I'm just what I'm doing now is I'm just filling in any gaps in the center of the flowers, or the flower, sorry, with these spiky petals. And there you have your fifth and final flower. This is, I would say, is, fa is a fascinator. This is not a headpiece. This is too small to be a headpiece. This is definitely a fascinator. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. So there you go, that is all five ways to use flowers in your next millinery project done. I like all of them, like I say, this one in particular, this larger version of the embroidered flowers, uh, if I was to do that again, I'd probably do it without the frayed edges. I think the frayed edges just look a little bit unfinished, personally myself, so yes, I'd probably do that with, un with finished edges on the fabric. This one I love, I love this one. I'm actually going to uh, add a shed ton of crystals um, onto this because I think it just needs that something extra just in the center section here. But my favorite, favorite, favorite has to be the embroidered patches. I love these. Um, and I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of this. And it's just so relaxing to do, just sit in front of the TV and just 
embroider. So there you go. Massive thank you to my uh, Patreon, Reggie. Uh, like once again, thank you for just being a continuous loyal supporter of this channel. Um, I can't do this without you guys watching and you know helping out by uh, joining Patreon, by my merch, um, or just even clicking like on this video down below. As I said earlier, timestamps are in the description box below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you already haven't subscribed and turn on that notification bell to be notified in future when the videos come out. I have my merch, so check that out down below. And thank you. This has been a struggle bus of a video to try and film with various different things going wrong. But we got there in the end. Uh, let me know what you want to see in any upcoming Five Ways videos. Stuff is linked in the description box below where I can find it. You have been great. I have been John. I will see you next week. Lots of love. Bye.